had to wait for a small pause because we had an accident with Ruhi. She wanted to have a teddy bear and she fell down. Now we will continue with part 3. Trisha buried her head in her arms and curled up like in a ball. Suddenly, she heard footsteps. It was Mr. Falker. He marched Eric down the office. When he came back, he found Trisha. I don't think you'll have to worry about that boy again, he said softly. What was he teasing you about, little one? I don't know, Trisha shrugged. Trisha was sure Mr. Falker believed that she could read. She had learned to memorize what the kid next to her was reading or she would wait for Mr. Falker to help her with a sentence. Then she would say the same thing that he did. Good, he would say. Then one day Mr. Falker asked her to stay after school and help wash the blackboards. He put on music and brought out little sandwiches as they worked on top. All at once he said, let's play a game. I'll shout out letters. You write them on the board with a wet sponge as quickly as you can. A, he shouted. She wiped a watery A. Eight, he shouted. She made a watery A. Fourteen, three, D, M, Q, he shouted out. He shouted out many, many, many letters and numbers. Then he walked up behind her and together they looked at the board. It was a watery mess. Trisha knew that none of the letters or numbers looked like they should. She threw the sponge down and tried to run. But Mr. Falker caught her arm and sank to her knees in front of you. In front of her. You poor baby, he said. You think you are dumb, don't you? How awful for you to be lonely and afraid. So she sobbed. But little one, don't you understand? You don't see letters or numbers the way other people do. And you've gotten through school all this time and fooled many, many good teachers. He smiled at her. That took cunning and smartness and such, such bravery. Then he stood up and finished washing the board. We are going to change all that, girl. You are going to read, I promise you that. <coughs> now, almost every day after school, she met with Mr. Falker and Miss Plessy, a reading teacher. They did a lot of things she didn't even understand. At first, she made circles in sand and then big sponge circles on the blackboard, going from left to right, left to right. Another day, they flicked letters on a screen and Trisha shouted them out loud. Still other days, she worked with wooden blocks and built words. Letters, 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 words, 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 always sounding them out. And that felt good. But though she read words, she hadn't read a whole sentence. And deep down, she still felt dumb. And then one spring day, had it been three months or four months since they had started, Mr. Falker put a book in front of her. She would never seen it before. He picked a paragraph in the middle of a page and pointed at it. Almost Almost as if it were magic or as if light poured into her brain, she would fall. The words and sentence started to take shape on the pages as they never had before. She marched them off too. Slowly she read a sentence, then another, and another, and finally she read a paragraph. And she understood the whole thing. She didn't notice that Mr. Falker and Miss Plessy had tears in their eyes. That night, Trisha ran home without stopping to catch her breath. She bounded up the front stairs, threw open her front door and ran through the dining room to the kitchen. She climbed up on the cupboard and grabbed a jar of honey. Then she went into the living room and found the book on shelf, the very book that her grandpa had shown her so many years ago. She spooned honey on the cover and tasted the sweetness and said to herself, The honey is sweet and so is knowledge, but knowledge is like the bee who made the honey. It has to be chased through the pages of book. Then she held the book, honey and all, close to her chest. She could feel tears roll down her cheeks. She will fall. But there weren't tears of sadness. She was happy, so very happy. The rest of the year became an odyssey of discovery and adventure for the little girl. She learned to love school. I know because that little girl was me, Patricia Polacco. I saw Mr. Falker again some 30 years later at a wedding. (laughs) 
I walked up to him and introduced myself. At first he had difficulty placing me. Then I told him who I was and how he had changed my life so many years ago. He hugged me and asked me what I did for a living. Why Mr. Falker? I asked. I make books for children. Thank you Mr. Falker. Thank you. The end. That's a good book.